Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on Key Stage 5 Equations Involving e to the x and Lun of x. Now firstly, what do I mean by e to the power of x and what do I mean by Lun of x? Now hopefully you've already watched the video on logarithms and we saw that a logarithm was the inverse function of its respective exponential function. So for example, if I had 3 and then I did 2 to the power of the 3, well that would give me 8, wouldn't it? And then we saw that to undo that 2 to the power of, we would do log base 2 of that number. So if we do log base 2 of the 8, that gets us back to 3. Now there's a special exponential function which is e to the power of x. Just as 2 to the power of x is an example of an exponential function, there's a special number we can put as a 2 known as e. And that e there is known as Euler's number. And its value is equal to 2.71 and it's irrational. The digits go on forever. And this is known as the exponential function. Now we'll see the significance of e to the x in other videos. But the main property of e to the x is that when you differentiate e to the x, it just becomes itself. And the fact that it's equal to itself is important in solving differential equations amongst many other uses. So e to the x is known as the exponential function because it's like the granddaddy of all exponential functions. It's the most important exponential function. And then we actually have an inverse of this. So we know that the inverse function of 2 to the x is log base 2 of x, as we saw up here. And the inverse of e to the x, the exponential function, would be, well, be log base e of x, mirroring the above. And actually, because log of e is so commonly seen in maths, we actually have a special function for it, so we actually write it as ln of x. We say that as ln. And that provides an inverse for e to the x. So, for example, if I started with x, and then I did e to the power of that, and then I did ln of that, because I did e to the power of, and then I did its inverse function, ln of it, that ln and the e to the power of just cancel each other out, and you're just left with x. Similarly, if I start with x, and I did ln of it, and then I did the inverse of ln, which is e to the power of that, then the e and the ln again cancel, and I just get x. And these two results are what is important for this particular video and how we'll solve all these equations here. So 1a, we have e to the x equals 5. Now we want to get x on its own to solve this equation. So we have to get rid of the e to the power of. How do we get rid of the e to the power of? We do the inverse of both sides. So we do ln of both sides. Now when we ln this, it gets rid of the e and we're just left with x. And then we ln the 5, we just get ln of 5. And we could put that into our calculator using the ln button there. But I'm just going to leave this as an exact result. Because often in the exam question they would ask you to give an exact answer rather than as a decimal. And what about this second one, which I've just quickly modified? 2e to the 3x plus 2 equals 6. Well, I want to get the e by itself first. So we divide both sides by 2 get e to the 3x plus 2 equals 3. Now I want to get rid of the e to the power of in front of that 3x plus 2, so I ln both sides, and that just gets rid of the e to the power of, leaving 3x plus 2, and then I also have to ln the 3, because I'm learning both sides. And now to get that x on its own, well I can get rid of that plus 2 by subtracting 2 from both sides. And then finally, to get rid of that times by 3, I divide both sides by 3, so I get ln of 3 minus 2, all over 3, and that will be the exact answer. And again, we could put that in our calculator. What about these equations involving ln? So we've got 2 ln x plus 1 equals 5. Now let's try and get this x on its own. Well, x was ln, then you times it by 2, then you added 1. So we should subtract 1 from both sides first, because that was the last thing we did. So subtract 1 from both sides to get 2 ln x equals 4. Then the ln x was times by 2, so we should divide both sides by 2 to get ln x is equal to 2. And now we want to get rid of the ln in front of this x. Now what's the opposite of ln which will get rid of it? Well, you do e to the power of both sides. So if we do e to the power of each side, that gets rid of the ln, leaving x, 
and then we also have to do e to the power of the right hand side so we get e squared and that will be the exact answer. And b, we got ln of 2x plus 1 equals 5. Now x, it was times by 2, you added 1 and then it was ln, so we want to get rid of that ln first because that was the last thing that was done to x. How do we get rid of ln? We do the inverse function which is e to the power of. So we do e to the power of both sides which gets rid of that ln leaving 2x plus 1. We also have to do e to the power of the 5. Then we can just subtract 1 and then divide both sides by 2 and we are done. Now, these next equations, they're kind of quadratics in disguise. They look a bit like quadratic equations, but they're quadratics in e to the x rather than in x. Now, I could write that first term, the e to the 2x, as e to the x squared, because thinking about laws of indices, if I have a power to a power, I times exponents together, so I'd have e to the x times 2, which is e to the 2x, which is exactly what we got there. And the reason I'm writing it like that is I could then make a substitution. So if I just let, I know, y equal to e to the x, then we've got y squared plus 2y minus 15 is equal to 0. And that is a classic quadratic, isn't it? So we can just factorise that quadratic. That factorises to y plus 5, y minus 3 equals 0. So y is minus 5 or y is 3, but y was e to the x, wasn't it? So we sub it back. Now, exponentials, if you think about an exponential graph, that y value can never be negative. So an exponential term can't give you a negative number. And in fact, if you're trying to learn both sides to get rid of that e to the power of, you can't learn a negative number. So that does not give you a solution. But we can solve this one. To get rid of that e to the power of, we learn both sides, and we just get x is learn free. So that is the one solution to this equation. Now b, we've got e to the x minus 2 e to the minus x equals 1. Now, if I'm ever trying to solve an equation with a negative power, I always try to write the equation without negative powers. So that would be 2 over e to the x. Remember that e to the minus x just means 1 over e to the x, and we're times it by 2. And then I think, well, I don't like fractions in equations, so to get rid of that over e to the x, I'm going to multiply both sides by e to the x. So we times the e to the x by e to the x. Now, I could write that as e to the 2x, but I'm going to write it as e to the x squared. So we end up with an equation very similar to what we had here. If we times this by e to the x, we're just left with minus 2. And we times 1 by e to the x, we get this. So then we write this in the same form as we did with the previous equation. We have the squared term first, then the just e to the x term. If we subtract it, then minus 2 equals 0. And at that point, you solve it as you did before. You could do a substitution, but I quite like to try and factorise it without the substitution. So I just imagine the e to the x is just x and factorise it in that way. So we need two numbers which add to give minus 1 times give minus 2. It's going to be plus 1 and minus 2. But instead of x, I've got e to the x instead. So I write e to the x. And then that means that either e to the x is minus 1 or e to the x is 2. This one doesn't give a solution. Again, exponential terms can't give a negative number. But this one gives us a solution of ln 2. And this final one in part 3, e to the 4x plus 5 e to the 2x is equal to 6. Now, this is a quadratic, but more in disguise than the previous ones. I could write this as e to the 2x squared plus 5e to the 2x minus 6 equals 0. I want 0 on one side. And notice that this is a quadratic in e to the 2x. So I factorise it in the normal way. So we need two numbers that add to give 5 times give minus 6. That's plus 6 and minus 1. But instead of a quadratic in terms of x, we've got a quadratic in terms of e to the 2x. So we've got e to the 2x here and e to the 2x there. That gives us e to the 2x is equal to minus 6, which we know doesn't give a solution. Or we've got e to the 2x is equal to 1. If I learn both sides, I get 2x equals learn 1. But log of 1 it, for any base, including a base of e, is just 0. So we've got 2x is 0, and therefore x is 0 is the only solution to that equation. And this final difficult question... We've got to solve 2 to the x, e to the x plus 1, 
is equal to 3 and we want an exact answer. Now we've got a quite a complex mix of stuff here and what you do in this particular scenario is you just log both sides. In fact we're going to specifically learn both sides and then use laws of logs to kind of break this expression up. So if I learn the left hand side I just get this, I'll break it up in a second and then we learn the free as well and now we can use laws of logs because you remember that log of AB is equal to log A plus log B. And we've got a product here. We've got log of something times something, so we can break that up as ln of 2 to the x plus ln of e to the x plus 1. Now this simplifies. Do you remember there's a law of logs that allows us to bring that power down to the front? So we get x ln 2. Now do you remember that ln and e to the power of cancel each other out, they're inverse functions, so we're just left with x plus 1. And now we're getting something that's increasingly simple. And then it's a sort of like changing the subject problem. We've got x appears multiple times, so we isolate the x terms on one side. So we've got x ln 2 plus the x. That's not an x term, so I'm going to subtract it from the other side. And then do you remember when you've isolated the x terms on one side, you factorise it out. So we get this. And then we can just divide both sides of the equation by that whole bracket here. So x is just ln3 minus 1 over ln2 plus 1. And that is the final exact solution.